Welcome back to the Halftime Show. Division 4 state title, Fort Laramie taking on McDonald. And first possession of the game, Dana Rose getting it wide open down low, and she lays it in. Then it's Kenzie Holscher. She's going to hit the tough pull-up jumper around the rim and in. Then it's Corinne Heitkamp. Same three names that you usually hear for Fort Loramie. She hits the corner three, and Fort Loramie up 7-0. Then later on, Ava Schultes getting the loose ball down low, and she scores, makes it 9-2. Then Kenzie Holscher again hitting another pull-up jumper. And this one looking a lot like their game against Crestview, a lot like games that Fort Normie has played all season long. Then Schultz is getting it on the baseline. She drives and she scores. Now it's going to be Rose getting it down low again, and then she will finish off the glass 15-2. Fort Normie on top, then getting the turnover. And Caitlin Gaston lays it up and in 17-2 after one. This one turning into a laugher at University of Dayton Arena. Then Gaston finding Colleen Brandewee in transition for the bucket to start the second quarter. Then Rose stepping outside and nailing the three 22-4 Fort Loramie. Then Clara Gephardt getting it. Transition and she scores. Now some more action here. Rose going baseline, and she will finish with a nice reverse, making it 26-8, Fort Loramie. Then Brandewee getting the nice cut down low, and then she lays it up and in. Now some defense for Fort Loramie. Schultes getting the steal here, takes it all the way. Left hand up and in, 20-point lead now for Fort Loramie. Now up 30-12 to 12 as Holscher gets things started with this offensive rebound and put back. And then later on, Holscher driving and scoring again, making it 46 to 16. And Fort Loramie wins the Division Four State Championship 60 to 26 as they are bringing home the hardware. You can catch extended coverage of this on our WOSN YouTube page. Congratulations to the Fort Loramie Redskins on their state championship this season. Way to go. Nice job, ladies. McDonald to have very many easy looks at the basket in the first quarter. And I thought offensively, um, we ran that opening play for Dana, and she cashed it in. And I think we all just, you know, took a collective breath there, and the girls just took off from there. Dana or Corinne, when coach talks about defense, do you ever think again? Or like, okay, we've heard it before, or anything like that? No, we know that that's our key to winning. So when she pounds it into our brain, we just have to think, like, buckle down, stay low, hands up, and just play as a team. Um, I think defense is our specialty, and we focus on it every day in practice, and we know that defense wins championships. And you just have to stay focused on what your role is on the team, and I think defensively we all played an amazing game. Well, I think we all move really well without the ball on offense, and that opens up a lot of things for us. And whenever we're shooting, we all shoot with confidence, so that helps our shots fall. And even when we don't make the shot, we're always picking each other up, getting the offensive rebounds, and putting it back up. I would like to add to that. I mean, offensively, you know, I, I probably preach defense too much, but um, offensively, this team, uh, the, the passing, um, the, the happiness they have when they're at, their teammates are doing a good job, you don't find that every year or with every team. Um, they just want each other to excel and be successful. And when you have something special like that, you know, so you play great defense, that's good. You have a good offense, that's good. But then when you have a team that cares and um, wants all of their teammates to be successful, that's like a special piece to the puzzle. And I think the success that these girls have had the last two seasons, you know, we, we were 26 and 0 last year, and they were both part of that. And then to go 29 and 1 this year, um, I think it's that chemistry and that teamwork and that unselfish um, love that they have for one another that maybe gives us just a little bit of edge and it makes our defense maybe sparkle a little bit better and makes our offense shine a little bit more. Would you like to say anything about our offense? Sure. Okay. Yeah. I can't wait to hear this. <laughs> I just say a key part of it is that we've been playing for so long, and especially for us seven seniors, we know each other. Like, we know what they're going to do next. And then for the lower underclassmen, they just come in and they fill in spots, and they know what their job is, too. So we all know how to get each other the ball, and everyone just plays their part and 
we win. <laughs> well, it's interesting. Coach touched on what I wanted to ask you guys. I think the biggest cheer since maybe the first quarter came when I don't know who it was on the line, but it was somebody that it was a backup, and they hit two free throws. Paige Otherman, you guys, a senior. You guys went crazy. Your crowd went crazy. That's a that's an intangible that Coach was just referring to. What does that come from? Um, I love Paige, and I love every one of our seniors. So when you see them out there doing big things, it just makes everyone everyone else's heart happy for them that Paige got two points in the state finals, and we're all just really happy for her. We're all, we're all like best friends off the court, so we're all so unselfish and just happy for each other when we score, and it's just the best feeling knowing that everyone scored today that could, and we're just going to cheer for everyone that does. First grade. <laughs> uh, yes, Fort Lauderdale is a very small town as well, and uh, these girls have been going to school together since kindergarten. Um, they started playing basketball in first grade. We have a we have a we have a wonderful youth program uh, that parents run. I, I just meet with them once once a year and talk about what we're trying to, to achieve. But I, the parents run it, so they start it in first grade, fundamental first for first and second grade, then third and fourth grade. It's called flying to the hoop, where they actually start playing five on five, and then our fifth and sixth grade is called the hot shot league. Is that right, Hotshot? Yeah, Hotshot League. And that's where they start uh, traveling and start playing other schools uh, to get our basketball where it needs to be. So my youth pro program is very strong. And as you can see, the, the results of it um, are, are these girls right here with this, this, un this unity and this bond that they have. Four seniors who uh, <laughs> from last year were sitting right there watching you guys. What can you talk about? Well, I'll try to talk about it without crying. Um, so. Those four seniors last year, um, you know, they were with me when they were freshmen, and we were not very good that year. We didn't even get off sectionals, which is like a heartbreak hotel in Fort Laramie, Ohio. Uh, but they, all four of them played for me as freshmen, and then as sophomores, they had to lead this group. So uh, their sophomore year, we were like, you know, I, I joke, we were like a JV team because I had sophomores and I had all these freshmen playing. And uh, we made it to the regional finals that year, which really wasn't expected for us to go that far. They were 22 and six. Uh, we lost to Minster. The following year, they, they come back, and uh, we beat Minster in the regular season, double overtime, but we lose to Minster in the, the regional finals again. And so then they come back their senior year, and they're 26-0. and 0, um, Perfect record. It's never happened at Fort Army in any sport ever. And um, those girls, I mean, I don't know how to word this the right way. They're not the most athletic basketball players, those four seniors, but their mental toughness and their attitude was like the best I've ever seen from a group. They, they never dropped their heads. They never had any bad body language. They were just like, let's go, let's go, let's go. And those four were so key to what we did last year. And for them not to get the chance to, to play at the shot, or not the shot last year, St. John, John's Arena, um, that was crushing to them. And they've been following us, and they've been emailing me and texting me throughout the year, wishing our girls the best. And so uh, I have to give kudos to OHSA uh, Jackie Winden. Is that, am I saying her name right, Winden? Um, she helped me get them the ribbons that they had today so they could get on the floor and celebrate with their – I mean, these are their teammates, and these are their friends and their, their sisterhood, too, from last year. So um, it was very emotional for them um, because it's, it's what could have been for them. But at least they were here, and I appreciate them coming and being a part of our victory today. What did it mean to you, Dana, to see them? Um, <clears throat> to me, it meant a lot that they were there very close to our bench, so it felt like they were with us along just like last year. And I'm just happy they were here with us and they got to celebrate with us finally. I think their leadership last year definitely helped us get there this year. They taught us a bunch of things, how to be good leaders, which helped us out this year. So they definitely earned it just as much as we did. Well, this is what you guys wanted to end a year ago. wanted today. Um, how do you feel about the, the week? They always say it's a thing for sweeter when you wait a long time to achieve. <laughs> I'd say that's very true. Like, what a way to go out on your senior season then with a win. And to have this around my neck just means a lot to me. It's an indescribable feeling. It was definitely a long wait, but it was well worth the wait. I mean, last year it would have been nice to get there, but getting there this year just made it so much more awesome, I guess. But I think from last year, we just had that fire to do it for ourselves and for those seniors that couldn't be there with us this year. So 
it was just so much more incredible to do it this year after the long wait. Well, um, I'm good friends with Jerry Close over at Waterford, and he is a defensive-minded guy as well. And I saw what they were doing to cause you know, problems for McDonald. Unfortunately, Jerry's team was um, offensively challenged uh, on Thursday. So we left thinking, OK, if, if Jerry's team can, can cause these problems, and his, his team was shorter than our team. I think you know, he had a bunch of 5'5 five, five girls on the floor. You know, we're putting out 5'10", five, 5'8" you know, six foot, 5'11", um, we thought that defensively, you know, we could maybe take away the, the, the shooting advantage that um, McDonald had over uh, Waterford on Thursday. And um, we didn't start off in our full court press. Um, I didn't want to get – I have a lot of respect for McDonald. I have a lot of respect for their players. I, 20 is phenomenal. And so we start off today just in our half court five. Uh, we didn't want to give them any easy layups, any easy baskets on transition. Um, number – Five for them, uh, their point guard. I mean, she gets she gets to the hole. She got to the hole a lot in the first half today, and I addressed it at halftime because I wasn't very impressed with her defense there. And I told the girls they need to take charges. So when Ava Schultz goes out and takes a charge, that's that's a that's a great day. Um, but yeah, I, I thought that our pressure could stymie them a little bit. Um, it's pretty good. Thank you. Thank, you, thank you. I'm going to share one story real quick here, okay? That, this caught me off guard, sorry. I started coaching at Fort Laramie in 1994, 95 season. I was a uh, varsity uh, a JV coach. And I'd walk into the junior high gym. Well, it's what's now the junior high gym was the high school gym. And I'd walk in there every day for practice, and there were three banners on the wall. 1977 Boys State Championship, 1987 Boys, and 1993 Boys. And I played at Fort Laramie, and my team made it to regionals twice, but we got uh, beat both years. And I just, every day I'd walk in there thinking, our, pro our girls' program is just as good, just as good. And we don't have anything on that wall. And um, so in 1997, as a varsity assistant, our team went to state, and we were runner-ups. We lost to Kaleida. But that just, that didn't, that didn't feel right, because that banner's over there, and those three banners are over there. And I was just like, we've got to get banners over there. Well, we're now in the high school gym, okay? And we've had lots of success in all of our sports. There's, there's boys, you know, baseball titles. There's cross-country titles. So, yeah, three girls tie. I mean, all I wanted was one banner on that wall. And to have three, yeah, um, I think it's impressive. Thank you. Thank you so much, you guys. I appreciate it. Thank you.